Welcome to the Over Analyzers. I'm Dan. He's Mike. We're going to take a shot and get into it. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> I poured like a shot and a half. Me too. It's hard to measure in the mason jar. <laughs> My shot glass was in the dishwasher because we actually recorded this show yesterday and something went wrong with the audio. So this is take two. Uh, so right. if we sound a little salty, that's why. Uh, this is going to be. I think we always basically sound salty. Yeah, well, maybe right? more than normal. This might be a bit of an angry, angry podcast. That's okay, though. <laughs> so here's the deal. This turns out to be episode 20. And I don't know that we've really shared this, but our thinking for this whole show was that we were going to try and think of the first 20 episodes as season one. And season one was an experiment for us on, I mean, some of the questions we had were, can we even do this? Is it going to be fun? <laughs> Is it going to completely burn us out? Will we get anything out of it? What do we want to talk about? How, how do you do that kind of thing? So we've, we've been experimenting this whole time. And we've decided that we're kind of at the end of our experiment. This is season one. Uh, and we want to take a moment to kind of step back and evaluate where we're at and reflect on that experiment. And to that end, we are going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, or a break from recording the show. We are still going to be around on YouTube and on Discord. We intend to stream every week. I know I missed my stream this week. I'm sorry. I was feeling crappy from uh, getting my first vaccine dose. But we're going to be around streaming, and we are going to be spending some time evaluating the show itself, trying to figure out the future direction and how ways we can improve it and things like that. So we will be back on July, the first week of July. July 5th, I think yeah. it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's... Really, all we're going to talk about today is just the show itself. So if you're if you're hooked into the, you know, how you get good at things stuff that we've been talking about, we're going to put that off for a little while. We still have this goal of coming up with this concrete document, essentially, you know, some piece of paper that says, here's what we think you ought to have in your head. You know, the, the method, the KonMari method, so to speak, of how to get good at something. Right. That's something that we're hoping to come back with after the break. Yeah, maybe not immediately, and I don't want to overpromise anything, but it, it is just something we've been wanting to do and, you know, haven't done yet. But yeah, and we're, we're that's looking... kind of the goal. Right, and we're looking forward to having a little time to really sink into working on the stuff we've been working on and trying to refine that method. So that's what we're going to do when we get back. So, that's our plan. Let's talk about the results of this experiment so we we had been trying to figure those things out uh one of the big questions was what what are we and what is what is our purpose what do we <laughs> well, want to talk about we started out uh and one of the big things was i wanted you to address the whole youtube thing and i thought that would be really interesting and i was really excited about that so that was you know from day one that was one of the goals and then you know, a couple other main topics uh, were kind of first in line. Like, oh, let's, we definitely have to talk about procrastination because that's interesting and perfectionism and obsession and a couple other things. And so at the beginning of the show, we really focused on very specific, uh, pretty common pitfalls right. of learning or, or I don't know. And it, it was kind of hard to define. It's like, well, what kind of show are we? Yeah. What are we really talking about? Because one episode is about should you make your passion a career? The next is about, you know, perfectionism and, you know, who, who knows? But then we, we started latching on to uh, how to improve at something or how to get better. And that became a lot more, well, the other episodes were personal. But the, that pursuit mm -hmm. really was on the, the top of our minds, I guess. Yeah, I, I think at the start, we had viewed ourselves as basically a productivity show. We never yeah. wanted to call it that because we knew that that just evokes, like, sepia we don't wanna, photos of a coffee we don't shop and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the, co yeah, the coffee shop. Right. And the, the laptop and all, like, 
that's not what we ever wanted to be about but it felt like that was kind of what we were and we have since then realized that it isn't we aren't a productivity podcast or at least not not really we we are not trying to sell like a product oh well for one we don't have any products we don't have a product sell, and nobody wants to pay us to sell theirs so we <laughs> easy to are sell. not trying to uh say that that we have the answers to everything all you have to do is wake up at uh, 5 a.m. every morning and drink a magic protein shake and do these five tips yeah, and yeah. you'll be, you know, as productive as the next or as the previous billionaire or something. Right. All we're trying to do is have conversations every week about things that, that we really care about and are passionate about. And it, it happens to often be uh, learning related and productivity related and uh, pitfalls of learning, things like that. But all we're really doing is having a conversation about it and trying to, to bring to light some of the things we've found and some of the frustrations we've had and try to keep this type of thinking a priority every week. Yeah. And it's really helped both of us, I think, a lot uh, since starting this. There were two ideas that you floated just on our own time we were talking about that, that have stuck with me. One is that we're kind of looking for excellence in different areas, which is a funny term, but I think it's pretty correct in that for anything we get interested in and want to talk about, we are trying to understand it to the best degree that we can. We aren't with procrastination, which is a topic that lots of people have talked about, right? We did not go into it looking for what are the five tips for not procrastinating anymore? We went into it thinking, let's try and understand what this does. This, understand why this happens to us. And during that process, we started to realize and theorize that actually procrastination is very connected with perfectionism and these personality traits, like the obsessiveness that we have. Those things are very related. And we just want to understand more about why that happens and why we behave that way and from that then we can start making some conclusions of okay here's some ways that we can actually mitigate this but the goal is not to get to those you know five productivity hacks or life hacks and stuff like that that's not what we want that's not really what we're after so this idea that we're just looking for these looking for root causes trying to understand more about ourselves trying and specifically trying to understand how to lately how to get really good at something what what happens there why why do we so often fail? What do we need to be doing? That kind of thing. And, and go ahead. The other idea that you had floated was that we are not actually targeting any profession. We talk about, I mentioned how I'm a software engineer at the start of every show, which is totally irrelevant because we haven't talked about software at all. And you're an artist, which is somewhat relevant to what you've been doing, but that's not really the point. You know, we've we've heard from right. people who are law professors, jazz musicians, teachers, researchers, like we've been hearing from you guys, the audience, and we're all doing different things. So the what we're after is not we don't want to be an art show. We don't want to be a software show or a Starcraft show. <laughs> we want to be a show that centers around a certain personality type or a type of person who is interested in these kinds of things the type of person who wants to sit around each week and think about how do i how do i improve my ways of thinking how do i get better at the things that i do or procrastinate less and that's what we're after that's the theme of the show yeah the the actual things that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis like i i talk about art all the time but right. actually i've played music for a long time you can see yeah. the guitar in the back and you have i mean you have a music theory youtube channel and you've played music your whole life i right. mean we're very passionate about a lot of different things and i we only use the things that we're doing as vehicles to express these ideas of how the human brain works right uh, i i think that's really what we're after and the way i was kind of thinking about it is back in the day law enforcement had a lot of difficulty connecting crimes. So say a serial killer killed someone in one state, went to a different state and killed someone the exact same way. 
law enforcement wouldn't see the pattern right away because there is no way there was no way for them to share the information. Like it wasn't Oklahoma until... doesn't talk to North Carolina. Say, say what? Like Oklahoma doesn't talk with North Carolina. They're separate states, yeah, separate yeah. agencies. Okay. Yeah, anything outside the, their jurisdiction, they just didn't share that information unless, you know, there's a direct call for it or something. But it wasn't until I think the 80s or 90s where they kind of started building this central data collection thing. And uh, that's when they started seeing all of these patterns of all these different crimes, and that's when uh, really things picked up. But for me, I look at musicians, and they they mostly just talk to other musicians about learning music. And I look at artists, and they mostly just talk to other artists. And neuroscientists really just talk to other neuroscientists. And I really think that things should be more mixed when it comes not only to learning things, but how we approach everything. I, I think a good artist should understand some of the neuroscience that goes into it. And it, it's actually kind of crazy how little research has gone into the mind of an artist. Like neuroscientists don't really understand how artists work. And so they don't really do research on it because they don't really know yeah. that there's a need for it. And there's this huge disconnect. And that goes across all of these different disciplines. And so I want this show to be a tiny little place where all of these different disciplines kind of come together and start finding the patterns in all of these different ways of thinking and how the, the categories cross over into each other. Right. So, and I've already started seeing that, like in the Discord chat, um, you have, you know, a musician talking to an artist or, or whatever, or an athlete answering the same questions. Yeah. Uh, and that's really cool to me. That's really exciting. So I never want our our talks when when I say art, I hope people don't stop listening. Uh I hope they just see it as a vehicle, as a way to express uh how the the brain works really. Right. It, w one thing that I have started to feel about the the books we've read, the papers we've read and things like that, you know, there is science that gets done on different areas. You know, we there's been research on the London cabbies and MRI scans of their brains. And the conclusion is, wow, that actually this part of their brain got a little bit bigger because of the way that they think. And that's all great. But what the hell does that mean? You know, we're, we're looking at a picture of someone's brain, which is so far away from what is actually happening inside their brain that we need to right. talk to them and we need to talk to each other because that's you don't get the subtleties of how a London cabbie thinks by scanning their brain. And I'm not saying it's bad science. I just mean that it's not that useful to me as somebody who's doing my own projects. I want to hear from the London cabbie on how they actually do things. And we, we've started to make some of these connections just with you and I of you're an artist and there are certain things in art that seem like they kind of come to the forefront like your ability to visualize something. That is obviously really vital if you're trying to draw a human figure from memory. You have to be able to visualize it in order to create it. For me, doing something totally different, like playing a video game, visualization isn't something that you necessarily pick up on right away as something important. I would think, no, I need to play the game. I need to practice. I need to learn build orders and raw information. But after hearing the way that you think, with the thing that you do, I've started to realize, oh, actually, visualization is right. really critical for certain areas. And I can start to apply that. And it's easy to measure improvement by doing that. And and vice versa, if I'm working on something very informational, we talked, I remember one night we had sat down and talked about this, how I have found the only way to retain that information long term was to write it down and use a space repetition memory system. And yeah. I convinced you to do that, which seems very odd for drawing a human skeleton, but you did it. And that sounded like it was a really valuable thing. And then that you made a huge difference. Yeah. And you started sending me photos of James Gurney and some of his sketches and noticing that he actually had all these notes taken on everything he had done. And it starts to look like, whoa, I think he does the same thing. I don't know if he used a yeah. flashcard system, but he is he's doing the same thing. He's drawing things and then finding specific pieces of information that he needs to remember. 
Yeah. So James Gurney is the super successful, incredible, like my favorite artist ever. But <laughs> right, if you uh, haven't, if you haven't picked right. up on that. But some of the things that we've discovered along the way, I'm looking back at some of the things that he's done while he was learning. And I'm like, oh, my, wait a minute, that thing in the background, I recognize that. Yeah. That's like a spaced repetition thing. And then he's talked about like study books and uh, ways of um, going back and, and looking at them again. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's the spaced yeah. repetition thing. And it's not something that you ever see in art books. They never give you the idea to do this spaced repetition thing on how to remember all of these things. So it's just been really interesting to look at some of the really good people and try to find some of these aspects and see if they fit. Yeah. Um, it, I, I've, the more we start to pay attention and look for those things, the more I start to notice them. Even with a friend of mine who is very good at math, she can add up numbers in her head really fast. And it's the kind of thing where people go, man, you're like a math whiz. You're a genius. And the assumption or implication is that wow, her math brain genes must be really good. She's just really smart. And talking with her and kind of poking at it a little bit, I'm like, how did you do that? How did you multiply those two numbers in your head so quickly? And she goes, oh, no, no, it's just a, it's like a bunch of little tricks. I just know that I can split that number apart. And I remember that, you know, this number multiplies to this number because I remember this silly little thing from one time. And like, it's all this, it's all those little memory tricks right. and ways of thinking that are so different than what we picture. You're picturing somebody with the, you know, the little floating numbers overhead doing yeah. this crazy calculation. She's not. She's thinking about it differently than other people are. But you don't. Nobody says that. Nobody talks or even necessarily recognizes what's going on. It's these things that are happening inside your mind that you're, they're just not the kind of thing that we put on paper and put in a textbook and say, you want to be really good at math, you need to think this way and make up silly memory tricks and, and learn goofy stuff as a way of visualizing numbers. But that's how it works. Yeah. And like with James Gurney doing these you know, taking notes and trying to remember things that way. It's just not, it's not how we think. We don't, we don't necessarily right. recognize that unless you really look for it. And that's, that's what we're after. We want to get into some of those areas. I think like the, just the show period. We, and it's not just about what we've been talking about this. Let's get really good at Starcraft and drawing stuff. We want to explore different things and understand more about ourselves and how you can excel in areas of your life and look at the pitfalls and the, the ways we think poorly and the mistakes we make. But we want to have that kind of view of it. We want to understand yeah. as much as we can about what's going on behind the scenes, sort of. Yeah. And I think there's this, I don't know. I had a day recently. I mean, we've talked about all these different methods and all these like, all these great theories on how to learn things. And so you begin to think, oh my God, I have it figured out. All I have to do is, you know, have the time to do it and I got it. Like, I'm totally good. Mm -hmm. And then I had a day recently where it was just, I couldn't do anything. Like, there, I was just stuck. I couldn't get past it. And I kept thinking, well, today doesn't count. Like, today, today I'm like not a real person or something. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but it's like I'm discounting everything that's happening. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, this is an outlier. Like this, this doesn't really count, <laughs> but it does count. Right. And I, I think it's really important that we keep looking at every single thing that, that happens like, like that. Why was it that day that I really, I could not get over the things I was dealing with in my head in, in order to work like, what was going on? Why was it that that day just couldn't happen? Right. And I just, I don't want to discount really anything when it comes to improving at something or, I don't know, just being a yeah, good or, person, I guess. You or know? looking at your the different states of mind that you can be in and what, yeah. what can or should happen in those different states. There is the best version of you where you were on fire and just killing it. And it's, well, we I, kind of identified this pretty early. That is a personality trait that we have. That's that perfectionism thing where you tend to identify yourself with this really great version of you that has happened a few times. And 
the normal you or even the poorly performing you we just discount like ah, oh, it's not me it's just whatever and we throw it away but right. that's that's still you that's still a day of your life that you didn't maybe capitalize on as well as you could have right so is there something that i'm missing that if i had just done that one thing i could have been able to be uh, much more productive that day i don't know so i want to keep looking and i think that brings us into we are interested in like the the whole person and we're, we're both uh, very into fitness you are you can lift a lot more weight than i can but uh you know i i just went for a run i like exercising i'm yeah. into that whether i do it enough or not i don't know but yeah you know we both like eating well so i would not be surprised if we started talking more about fitness and how that related to yeah the brain and learning things it, we're just we're interested in in all of it i think yeah so I, as far as future topics go um well i don't know what are some things that you think we could possibly talk about in the future besides just the same string of you know how to get really good at something well uh, so like you said health is something we're interested in we actually tried to do a show on that and failed miserably which yeah we'll, which we'll has take. happened more than once we've done like right. maybe six that we had to yeah and we'll destroy. talk about we'll talk about that in a second but so health is something we'd like to get into uh there doesn't seem to be any end to the number of mental pitfalls that you can get into and I think yeah. that there is this infinite well of interesting ideas to talk about there. We had said that, I, I almost think of it like, you know how there's a bunch of logical fallacies? You know, the uh, yeah. appeal to authority, the reasoning by analogy, or, you know, there's this whole laundry list of different logical errors you can make when you're trying to make an argument. I think that there's something similar like or something similar to that in this area of doing your best in a sense like really excelling and and doing well your uh, having low confidence can cause you to withdraw a little bit and you can't you can't execute and really push your limits if you're being timid like that's that's a logical fallacy so to speak of uh, like a learning fallacy a, a way of preventing yourself from getting to where you need to be and like learning effectively i think there are yeah. we talked about the first one in the game effect and how that's just this thing that happens a, a, a mindset that can come out of the most trivial of things or well there's even more obvious ones like procrastinating or not even doing right. the thing that you need to do in the first place never mind doing it poorly like there's so many things there that are very fascinating to me that i think we could talk about but like we said, we have decided that what we are about is a way of thinking and uh, a type of person or a, 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 an interest in this kind of thing. So really nothing is off the table. I wouldn't mind revisiting social media and social platforms again because we, <laughs> we talked about them as something that's distracting and that you kind of have to minimize. But really, they're truly a source of evil in the world and we can't say enough bad things about twitter and instagram and things like that there's a lot of conversation that we could have there. yeah also go follow us on instagram uh yeah, yeah. we have an instagram we also have a twitter. twitter we haven't set up yeah there's yeah any criticism of social media always ends in blatant hypocrisy yeah which is also yeah. awesome but yeah no I, I wouldn't mind revisiting a lot of that stuff and it's really i mean it's a part of your every day and so yeah. it's going to come back up um, yeah. But that's been the big result of the experiment, I think, is that we figured out that that's, that's what we want. We don't really want to limit to a certain topic. We have been on this, how do you get good at something thing for a while, but that's not, that's not it. That's just a thing that we got very interested in and feels very important to us. Yeah, and it makes me really happy to see other people talk about things that are not related to what we do, and yeah. yet they're still able to use the same type of thinking. Uh, you know, like writers and the law professor and uh, a singer. It just, it makes right. me really happy to see other people right. applying these things to other things. Right. So the, the kind of last thing is that we are taking a break. We said we're around, we're not going anywhere. We're on Discord, we're on all that stuff. But uh, we want to take a little bit of a step back because we, we have been doing this every week and we've even recorded a lot of stuff that you guys haven't seen because it was so terrible that we had to burn it immediately. 
Uh, but that's been part of our process is trying to figure out how do we even do this? How do you put two people together and have a casual-esque conversation about a specific topic? And it should, we want it to feel relaxed and fun, but then also focused. And, you know, we want to get to some interesting points. It's been a, a tricky thing to figure out and we're still working on it. And to that end, we've kind of decided that we want a little time because we want to be able to step back a little bit and kind of apply some of these ideas to the show itself. You know, we have, we've decided that if you want to excel at anything, you need a good mental model for it, you need a way of evaluating everything you do against this ideal in your head. But I don't know that we really have that for the show itself. And we've talked about it some, we have some ideas, but that's something we want to work on. And the reason is that we've decided that we really like this. We, we actually do want to keep doing this because it's been, it's actually been really amazing. We both have had specific areas where our thinking has changed permanently. I, I know that about myself now that just from this show, from the past 20 weeks or so, there are certain things like the way I think that are just different now. My perception of myself in terms of learning something has changed forever. I no longer think that I have this innate talent that I'm just trying to express and I get to find out how good I'm going to be at something. I don't think that way anymore. I am very confident that even if there are deep-rooted uh, mentality hang-ups that I have, I could change them. I could be really good at something. I there. There is no implied genetic barrier there. That's been a huge shift in the way I think. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of these revelations have come directly from comments that we've gotten, yeah. at, uh, book rep recommendations that we've gotten from you guys. So it's been, it's been such a learning process. Yeah. Uh, especially for me, I think. But Well, yeah. The one thing I don't think either of us expected at all was the depth of the audience that we have. I mean, we are a small show. You know, we are our numbers are in the thousands, not the millions. But despite Give your lake example. Okay. So <laughs> the way I think about you can tell we did this already. <laughs> the way I think about an audience on any kind of social platform like YouTube or Twitter or something is that the audience is kind of like a body of water. And there's the the breadth of that body of water, so how big it is. And the other day I watched this video of some guy who took This Is America, the music video from This Is America, the Childish Gambino song, and he set it to Call Me Maybe, like that song. And so the music video is this very violent, kind of provocative social commentary set in perfect time and in perfect sequence to Call Me Maybe. And it's really funny and kind of disturbing and it's just this amusing video and it has 14 or 15 million views or something like that just an absurd amount of views and the guy's channel has basically no subscribers just a handful and to me that's because why would you subscribe to that right like you're not looking to see what this guy's thoughts are on anything you're not you don't want to follow him it's just this amusing thing but it appeals to almost anyone because it's pop music and pop culture and so it's got this massively broad appeal that is unbelievably shallow like my engagement with that person is as tiny as it could be and so we are more like a, a well or a hot spring like we have a very small audience but judging by the thoughtfulness and the reflection and insight that people have had the audience that we have is incredibly deep We've just gotten some of the most incredible things that I don't think I've seen in any other YouTube channel. I mean, I'm sure it's out there, but it's just been really stunning. We never expected that. We get comments that are just, you know, a thesis on an area that we never thought about. That is totally mind blowing. It's really incredible. We got the discord going. We've been getting emails from people. It's really awesome. So right now we have this, I think, small but very deep audience. And we love that. It's like a sinkhole. Yeah. <laughs> Like a, like, a, like a good positive sinkhole. Yeah. And what we, we, it's become really valuable to us. We would like to keep doing this. And I know that this is the same pitch that every internet person makes ever, but 
the biggest problem we have is that we would just like to spend more time on this. And that means that eventually, and this is not something that we are concerned with at all in the near future, but it, it would be great if eventually the show could be somewhat self-sustaining where it made some money, we can just cut out more work, spend more time on the show. And I know that sounds like exactly what I said on my YouTube theory channel before things got weird, but things feel so different now with the audience that we have engaged with and everything. Like, I just feel like I'm in such a better place that it would be a really wonderful goal to eventually work towards is having the show make, uh, make some money. So the, that's something we want to step back and think about a little bit. How would we grow the show? You know, what, what would we need to do to push things in that direction? Uh, and so part of that would be the production value. Can we make things look better? Can we present ourselves in a more professional way? But then also, how can we improve the show itself? You know, what can well, we do? Also, you know, I would want to spend more time on, like, you know, documents that, you know, I don't know, stuff like that. Like putting together a document of, you know, the best ways to learn. Like thinking more of, right. I don't know, working on things. Uh I don't know. I don't know what they would be. Yeah. But uh, we stuff like, like we floated the idea of like uh, the overanalyzers book club, which might be really cool. Uh, yeah. You know, community. But that would take projects. a lot of time. So that's something that right. we so couldn't it, do. Yeah. Yeah. So to that end, we want to spend a little bit of time just evaluating ourselves and trying to think about what can we do to improve the show, both in terms of reach. You know, how do we get more people to click into the show and bring in an audience that way? And then also, how do we how do we deepen the content? How do we execute better, you know, come across better, have better conversations that are deeper and more thought provoking and that kind of thing? How do we communicate with you guys, the audience better, that sort of stuff. So to that end, we would love some thoughts on that. We know we have an incredibly thoughtful audience. So what do you guys think? You know, what, what are your observations on, on that? How do you think we could improve and make the show more valuable to you uh, some specific things that i think are really useful like we said we're trying to assemble a bit of a model of our own in terms of what what we think it ought to be so if you can think of shows that are similar but execute better or just better in a certain area or anything like that uh that is really valuable to us we can compare ourselves to that and try and understand what what is the gap you know what what is not being executed as well on our end uh versus theirs or if you just have a specific things that you can think of like, Hey, Mike, sometimes you come off like a bit of an asshole and you should not do that. Then, okay. I want to hear that. You know, that's something that we can try to understand and, and work on. So we're looking for feedback. We're looking to improve things. And that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time on just to work on the show itself. Yeah. Don't hold back the feedback. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, don't hold back. We're fine. Yeah. We okay. Oh, a, a couple people have, have been interested in being guests on the show and have asked about if we're interested in having guests on the show. And I, we should probably just address that. Okay. Uh, are we, what's the answer? <laughs> well, it's a great question. And we've both thought about having guests. We're both very afraid of having guests on the show <laughs> because none of us, like we, we have not interviewed people before. And also I don't know, who would want to be on a show with this low of numbers, <laughs> you know, but it, I don't think we will be doing that anytime soon, but it's not something we're totally turned off to. Basically. I think we're just going to punt on that again. Uh, we had to scrap the show, this one from yesterday because we had technical problems. So we just have to get that sorted out. And when you introduce a third person from a third location, right. it just adds a lot. So, let's we're that's still something that we're considering and i think that fits in a little bit to the model of what what do we want a good show to be but i think we're just gonna kind of idle on that for now I'll say for the moment no guess but we we would like to get there we just need to figure out a little bit more about how also uh if you guys have future topics you want us to talk about can't promise that we'll talk about them because mostly the topics we choose are things that we're thinking about that week but a lot of times, if you guys are talking about a topic, we end up thinking about it that week, yeah. and then we end up wanting to talk about it. So if you have future topics you'd like us to discuss, let us know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. All right.
All right, so we are we're taking a little bit of a break. We will see you guys in a few weeks, month or two. Jul July fifth. July fifth. Yeah, we will be back July fifth. Yeah. But we are in Discord and we will be for the whole duration. So talk to us there. Uh, we look forward to hanging out and hearing what you guys think. And again, give us some feedback. That's something that we're really looking for right now. We want to think about that kind of stuff. But thanks for being so amazing. It really has been a, a pretty incredible ride.